Hey yo, what is up guys? It's Ari here from Conviction Investing. Today I want to go through a fantastic project that's been around for a while, but it's really, really just beginning to take stride. Constellation DAG. I want to go through the basics of what Constellation is, uh, what, what the use cases are, things like the difference between the blockchain that Bitcoin and Ethereum use versus the DAG network that um, Constellation uses, uh, talk about some of the partners and why I think this project is so unique and has such a massive, massive future ahead. Just before I go on as well, guys, I have to say that this is not financial advice it's just for educational purposes please make sure you do your own research before you buy anything so starting off with the overview uh, firstly what is constellation constellation in simple terms is an open source platform that can be used to do anything from create blockchains to mint cryptocurrencies and develop decentralized applications it's a distributed network so there are nodes in different locations around the world making it decentralized that enables fast scalable keyword there solutions for businesses that need to process and transfer data and other keywords securely so benefits of this crypto and the network in general which they call the hypergraph uh, are the scalability and the ability to handle uh, accommodate massive amounts of data why do we need constellation so basically guys today's digital infrastructure and that includes uh, the blockchains that bitcoin and ethereum use they weren't built for the tech of tomorrow they, they weren't really built to scale uh, and that, that includes industries like AI, big data, machine learning, the Internet of Things, autonomous vehicles and smart cities, uh, which all require massive amounts of data uh, to be processed, stored and accommodated. Constellation's decentralized network, the Hypergraph, provides a scalable decentralized infrastructure to accommodate a world powered by data. Uh, and that is because of the way the hypergraph is structured. As I said, it's a DAG, DAG network as opposed to a blockchain. And I'll go through the differences between those soon. So moving on to layer zero versus layer one, guys. Um, firstly, so blockchains like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polkadot, Cardano, the ones most of us have all heard of are all what's called layer one networks. Constellation, on the other hand, is the first layer zero network. So the la this layer zero protocol, as the name would suggest guys, is the layer that lies beneath all of these layer ones. And as such, layers, this layer zero protocol has the ability to connect all of these layer ones. So Constellation's Hypergraph has the ability to connect Bitcoin's blockchain to Ethereum, Ethereum's blockchain to Cardano, uh, and, and enables what's called cross-chain interoperability. The implications of that, guys, are massive. Now, what is the DAG token? DAG is the native cryptocurrency on Constellation. So it's a utility token that can be used for a couple of things. Two of the main ones are, in order to create a state channel, um, you need DAG. So where people can create them to, to make their own businesses on the hypergraph. And we have two fantastic examples of that which are lattice exchange and alchemy um, that were both created and launched on the hypergraph um, and you also need dag um, specifically 250,000 dag tokens to run a node which are used to, to validate transactions and earn back validator rewards in dag dag is what binds the components of this network together and enables them to relate to each other so it's like the lifeblood of the hypergraph network just like the usd is for the us economy so blockchain versus dag now firstly what is a blockchain um, a blockchain in simple terms guys is a decentralized distributed and usually public digital ledger that consists of records that are called blocks that are used to record transactions more importantly how do they work so basically guys as you can see in the picture down here groups of transactions are grouped together in these blocks these blocks are then verified by miners who receive rewards in return for their efforts 
and after each of these blocks is filled so these are all filled with transactions after it's been verified the new new transactions enter a fresh block which is chained onto the previous one uh, which makes these all as the chain moves on these are all in chronological order now moving on to limitations of the blockchain so with blockchains there are only so many miners that can verify these transactions that are going through and the problem with this is if this blockchain if if the blockchain is experiencing peak traffic the network then gets congested leading to problems like slow processing times and extremely high gas fees like we've all heard of with ethereum today uh, in short guys blockchains weren't built to scale so now let's compare this to the DAG network, aka directed acyclic graph that Constellation uses, aka the hypergraph. So DAGs guys get rid of blocks entirely. So in instead of having large mining firms confirming transactions through proof of work, uh, like blockchains do, DAGs instead employ the very transactions that users make in order to confirm each other tra each other's transactions. So the more new transactions on the network, the more the available transactions to confirm previous ones. That is huge guys, when it comes to scalability, uh, it's exactly what you want to be looking for. So in terms of basically as the network grows, this thing gets more efficient, this thing gets better, this thing gets faster, which is exactly what big data needs. Now what are the benefits of DAGs? So firstly guys, speed and transactions per second. So unlike blockchains, the more transactions there are to process, the faster the response speed is. It's as simple as that. Uh, also high levels of scalability. So by not being subject to limitations on block creation times, a greater number of transactions can be processed than those processed by blockchains. That is also particularly attractive in the application of the internet of things. Uh, there's also no mining required, so basically it's, it's a huge environmental benefit. Um, the carbon footprint, footprint is a tiny fraction of other cryptocurrencies that require money, mining to generate their blockchain. And last but not least, it's also fee-less. So there are no commissions or transactions fee, transaction fees because mining is not required. So now moving on to state channels versus smart contracts. Firstly guys, what are state channels? So state channels, put simply, are an evolution of smart contracts. They are microservices that validate specific data types with user-defined validation functions. In more simple terms guys, basically they're like self-governing businesses on the hypergraph that have the ability to design their own ecosystems. Now what are the advantages of state channels over smart contracts? So firstly guys, state channels are able to process and validate third party data from multiple blockchains or other data sources. So that includes the likes of cars, devices, APIs. Ethereum on the other hand is, isn't able to do this. So Ethereum smart contracts are only capable of handling specific data that exists on the Ethereum blockchain. Obviously guys, that is extremely limiting because most of the world's data is simply not on Ethereum. DAG state channels, on the other hand, are able to process arbitrary data from the likes of autonomous cars, devices, APIs, you name it, basically anything that emits data. Um, they're also compatible with legacy systems, which are like systems that are no longer really used. Um, smart contracts also incur gas fees. So say, for example, when you're swapping ERC20 tokens on Uniswap or SushiSwap, there are always gas fees to pay. State channels, on the other hand, can execute the same exact thing. Uh, so trading ERC20 tokens with basically no gas fees. Um, state channels can also freely create any tokenomics they wish on Constellation that involve third-party data as well as fearless interoperability into any blockchain. Now moving on to partners. So as you guys can see on the left here, despite Constellation still being in relatively early stages, they've already got some massive, massive names as partners. So you have the likes of AWS, you have the li likes of Space Isaac, you have the likes of the US Air Force, where Constellation provides the centralized security. 
Uh, you also have the likes of Splunk, which is a big data company uh, worth $23 billion. Um, and, and even more interesting, guys, are these new projects that are being built and launched on the Hypergraph. So that includes the Lattice Exchange and Alchemy Exchange. So Lattice, guys, if you don't already know, is a decentralized exchange that offers near zero swap fees while enabling cross-chain support and institutional grade trading tools so the implications of that are huge to be able to do sort of swaps with no fees is incredible uh, and alchemy as well is a is the first decentralized ad exchange um, which is basically targeting a 340 billion dollar digital advertising agency so to have these two businesses launched on the hypergraph so early is is incredible all right guys so now looking at the roadmap and the future as well so so far in 2021 it's been a massive year we've had the release of tokenomics 2.0 had the launches of lattice exchange and alchemy um, there's also very recently been an update to the stargazer wallet where you're able to now hold erc20 tokens uh, and also the most importantly we have the imminent release of node 2.0 where anyone with 250,000 in DAG tokens as collateral will be able to run a node that has huge implications on the scaling guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this or got anything out of it please make sure to like comment and subscribe um, I'd love to make more videos on the Constellation ecosystem. I still think we're in super, super early days and there's a hell of a lot to come. Cheers, guys.